I was not somebody who thought that making and balancing TFT was easy, but it was way harder than I already thought it was. Um, this game has so many moving parts, it's really fucking hard to balance. And it blows my mind every day that Mort and Kent handled that for as long as they did with the resources they had. Like, if the team has grown this much since I've been here, like, I can only imagine. that are just like unacceptable nowadays just unacceptable dragons being immune to uh damage freaking uh you know cursed blade phantom hextech pantheon card like nope tft's story is one of ambition one of risk but most of all one of perseverance and determination. And this is how it all started. The year was 2019. COVID was barely a twinkle in a millennial's eye. We were taking pictures of black holes and we were raiding Area 51. It was also a time when a few people stumbled on a mod for Dota, Dota Auto Chess, and decided to take that concept and run with it. Speed was crucial, they needed to get it out as soon as possible. It did start slow, but it wouldn't take long for concepts to start ironing themselves out and take form. 18 weeks, that's how long it took from concept to PBE. For right second ever game, 18 weeks of blood, sweat and probably Red Bull. He'd opted to use the League of Legends engine, and that worked better than anyone could have anticipated. Whereas subsequent sets have felt like teamfight tactics as a whole new game, the first set was really a League of Legends auto battler. Even set 9 couldn't capture that magic. There was a certain rawness to it, a lack of polish, that led to some of the craziest interactions we've ever seen. It was almost like taking a time capsule and going back to Season 1 League of Legends. Bear in mind that TFT was released before Valorant was even announced, so you can imagine everyone was like, Riot's got a new game, the first time in 10 years. There's the old adage, if everything is broken, then nothing is broken, and it really rung true in Set 1. Items were broken, champions were broken, PvE was broken, everything felt strong, and anything could kill you. Bugs were unintended features, and that really helped set one stand apart from other sets. The lack of development time and the small team just working together to create something fun and vaguely sellable meant so many things slipped through the cracks, and so many bugs popped up every single day. But that worked, it made it feel so much more exciting that you could find some broken thing to play and build something like an Exodia. But if you didn't play back then, the game was completely different to what we have now. For one, items were a lot less calculated. They just threw in whatever they thought was cool and hoped it worked. And some of these items had some of the craziest effects. And some have started to come back today, like Curse Blade. But this really was the set of on-hit effects with Hush, Swordbreaker, Tiamat. So things like Curse Blade could send a whole team back to being a zero-star unit. And it was also the only set where Spatula built into an item, which was Runan's Hurricane. With the small board, squishy units, and the amount of assassins, it was normally correct to put at least one defensive item on your carry. So things like Phantom Dancer were a must, and you would almost always try to start Bowstar on Carousel. 
For defensive items, you had Thornmail, which turned Braum into a 1v9 god. And Braum reroll really took off for a couple of patches. And then there was Dragon Claw, which gave a flat 75% reduction to all magic sources. But there was also more items that were so broken, they were nerfed again and again and again. And over the years, finally ended up as support anvils. And that was Zeke's and Locket. The Locket stacking meta it lasted all but five minutes, but in that five minutes, you could do some crazy things with it. The thing about the locket stacking meta, and also items like Ludens, is at the start of TFT, they actually scaled with AP. So the more AP you had, the more damage or the more shielding you would actually receive. And things like Akali just were on a whole nother level. But then there were the bugged ones, like Frozen Heart, which, when stacked, could make a champion literally stand still, giving rise to the Frozen Heart Pike. I will be doing every set eventually, so if you don't want to miss that, don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, if you want to go and see some previous sets, uh, there's two, three, four, and six. Go and check them out. There was one other feature that Riot did excellently, and I think it is one of the greatest things that TFT has. I don't know if other auto battlers have it because frankly I haven't played them, but it is the spatula item and the ability to give traits to people, which just unlocked some of the craziest things we've ever seen. The first things that come to mind is obviously Void Sins with Kassadin, which really even to this day people still think about as one of the most broken interactions ever. But then we have the Blade Master Spatula, which unlocked a thing called Lawnmower Graves. Now, Lawnmower Graves is just hilarious to watch, but it was kind of strong. Even if it was a bit hard to get, because you needed a lot of bows. But then there was my favorite, and I think one of the ones that people always think about is Demon Volibear. He could basically steal mana from your whole team, and there was nothing you could do about it. Of course, it wasn't just items and spatulas and bugs that were broken. The traits and the units themselves were pretty crazy too. Now, I don't want to go through every single one because frankly that would take a lot longer than I'm willing to give, but we'll just run through a few of the, the cooler ones. Obviously we had Pirate, which was a little bit of money that you got every round. And then you had Void doing true damage. Wild was had its moment in the sun. You had Yordle. I don't need to stress how much people love Yordles, everyone loves Yordles. Back in set 1, there was a thing called Dodge, and Yordles basically made that a bit better. But there were times when you could be playing like an AD comp, and then every single one of your attacks is being dodged. And this was just a thing that existed in set 1. Dodge was just a thing. I'm so glad they took away Dodge in set 8. And then you had cool units like Yasuo. These units felt very similar to their League of Legends counterparts. And then you had units like Leona. We have never seen Leona like that ever again. Five seconds of CC is just insane. And then there was Karthus, who was incredibly strong as well. And just generally, it was very annoying to play against Phantom because one unit just straight up got taken off the board. There's nothing you could do about it. Just gone. Thank you, game. Thank you, Riot. And when it happened to your carrier, all you wanted to do was throw your PC in the bin because fuck. And then you had the most frustrating comp of all. Hextech is by design absolutely disgusting and I am glad I've never ever ever seen it again because I cannot believe that was allowed to exist. I can't. And then you had Dragon and Dragon was basically, hey you get 75% resistance to magic and originally it was you are immune to magic damage and there's nothing you could do. If you had a sorcery comp you literally could not kill Pantheon or Aurelian Soul or Shivana. And let's get started on Pantheon, shall we? Pantheon, literally the strongest unit that we've ever seen as a five cost, because that unit could tank everything and kill everything all at the same time. But I don't want to forget talking about Ninja and Elementalist. Elementalist was our first ever summoning trait, and it was cool. It was great. You just basically got a daisy for free, and it was fun to play. Splash in some ninja, and yeah, you're having a good time. You're not feeling bad about yourself. But then there was also Imperial, and then you could cap out with Swain, who was an incredibly strong unit, who could literally kill everyone, tank everyone, sustain everyone. Like, you you really like playing Swain when you could get him. 
then you had other sort of vertical things like Sorcerer. Now, Sorcerer with Aurelian Soul could one shot a board. And you've got to think, this is back in the day when the board was very small, so everything was condensed. So Aurelian Soul and Nivea and all of these other units that did inner line damage or AoE damage could literally one shot an entire team because there was no distance between the units and everything was too close together. So Aurelian Soul was just insane. And then you couldn't kill him with magic damage, so you had to use assassins. And then we obviously had Twisted Fate, who, by every metric, is hilarious. And then you had Blitzcrank, which needs no introduction. He basically just meant that, hey, I'm taking one of your units and they're gonna die. <laughs> Set 1 was probably the perfect start for TFT. It gave us all the champions that we'd grown up with with League of Legends and introduced us to a new way of playing that was a lot more laid back than the solo queue counterpart. It drew me in with its casual nature and inspired a love in me, a love of exploration, a love of decision making, a love of doing things in ways that you just don't really think about. It was like playing tower defense and it reminded me of that 10 year old boy that used to play Warcraft 3 for 12 hours a day. There was something about that that set one gave to me. It gave me back my 10 year old self and allowed me to feel like I was a kid again. And here I am five years later, still here, still playing, but now, slightly more optimistic about the future because we can look back and see the progress that we've made along the way now set one might not be the perfect set it was rushed and it was rough but my god it was fun <laughs>